Everyone is here. Uh, bom dia to the bay. Por, fala português? <laughs> no? Okay. English then or Finnish? Anybody here speaks Finnish? No? So sad. Uh, my name is uh, Mikko. I'm uh, working for a company called localbitcoins.com and I'm here to have a uh, presentation uh, what's it's uh, what it is uh, to work with uh, money in Python and uh, how uh, our company is working and uh, it's a little bit like uh, crisscross of software development and company practices and uh, all this Bitcoin revolution so bear, bear with me if you don't uh, care about the stuff I'm talking and uh, Let's go to the back to the basics. How many of you know what's this? Please raise your hands. Yes, this is a, I call this a paper. And in Finland we have a paper, paper industry and we know that the paper goes away. As you can know that the, in the internet, uh, services like books, videos, movies, they have all go to internet and electronic versions. And you don't anymore go to shop to buy DVDs. So it's just a natural step that the money also goes to the internet and everything will be replaced online stuff if you are doing business online. Which brings me to a Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a virtual currency and uh, it's very, uh, if you are a software developer, it's very, very handy because you can actually go to your uh, cell prompt and you can just give your Unix commands. Uh, send money, get money, and that's how easy it is. It's like a very easy. The other thing is it works everywhere. For example, I had a friend from Australia who tried to book a flight in Brazil. He actually booked the flights, but they had cancelled the flights because they couldn't uh, process Australian credit card payments. That kind of things don't happen with Bitcoin. Also, uh, if you are uh, dealing with credit card payments, it's uh, very common that you uh, are accepting money from a stolen credit cards, and uh, it's actually the make merchant who is the it's the shop owner who is going to uh, need to pay all the costs. It's never the credit card owner who is losing his credit card uh, and he always gets the money back. But it's the merchant who is uh, taking the payment. Also, uh, with the Bitcoin, it's 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 that uh, it's uh, more or less inflation safe if you compare to uh, it's to Argentinian peso. Anyone from Argentina? So you know that the Argentinian peso is going like this and the Bitcoin is going like a, this too, but it's almost the same. So it actually makes more sense to have a Bitcoin than pesos. And the other one is that you are in the control of money. What happened in Cyprus, in Europe, that the government just came in and took all money from your bank account. It can't happen with Bitcoin because you are uh, in control of your uh, private keys, how to make transactions. And this is uh, how uh, Bitcoin economy works. First, you have this uh, Bitcoin mining that somebody is creating those Bitcoins. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not very interesting anymore. It's uh, mostly Chinese people doing that in, uh, with the hardware factories and stuff like that. And uh, those miners sell, in, sell it to the centralized exchanges where we have uh, speculators. It'll be like in stock market, they are uh, hedging Bitcoin value up and down and try to make uh, money out of the cost differences. And after that, it's, we are a little bit closer to a normal person. We have in-person exchange, like you go to uh, meet some person, like you come to me and say, I want to buy Bitcoins and you give me reais and I give you back Bitcoins. It's like a person to person. And then you, when you have those Bitcoins, you can go to online and buy uh, some books or movies or whatever with that, them. I would say that you could buy a uh, uh, drug, sex and rock and roll with Bitcoins, but uh, let's say that you can by domains and virtual private servers and stuff like that. So it sounds more legal. And uh, if you want to build your own, uh, own uh, service where you're accepting money, we have a Django project which you can use. And if you want to know more about this, you can just come to and knock me and I will uh, explain you how it works. But I don't want to go to in the technical details in this presentation. And then uh, this is our website I'm working right now. We have uh, 10,000 
actually that's wrong, it's 10,000 visitors per day, 500 new users per day, and uh, about uh, 350 US, 350,000 US dollars goes through the website every day. So it's, it's a okay business. And I think we have like 4% uh, of all uh, public uh, Bitcoin exchange markets in the world. So it's happening on our website. And it means that it's, it's very popular and uh, it's, uh, we get already some kind of scalability problems with the process. And how the local Bitcoins uh, fits on uh, this map is that uh, we are an in-person exchange that uh, you can, uh, it's, it's, it's like an eBay, you can put an advertisement on our website and uh, in advertisement you say that, okay, I'm selling bit or buying Bitcoins with uh, Brazilian bank transfer and this is my exchange rate. And then uh, other bit, uh, people can come to website and find your advertisement and then they can uh, contact you and say, hey, okay, I want to buy your Bitcoins. And the trick here is that we are supporting, uh, because it's like in person to person, uh, it can work everywhere where we have people who can actually put up the advertisement and have some kind of uh, payment method going on. So it works all around the world, Western Union, uh, PayPal, uh, and if, if nothing else works, it works with the cash. And we have even uh, guys who have a kind of deals that, okay, if you send me a MacBook Pro, I will send you the Bitcoins. Okay, and that's about our website. And now I uh, talk about how our company works. In the 60s, when uh, uh, NASA was still doing this space business and uh, there was a space race going on the with the US and the Soviet Union. If you went to a visit NASA and ask it, uh, uh, Yater there, the guy who is uh, cleaning the floor, that, okay, what you are doing here? And the answer was, I'm here to put man on the moon. So everybody in the NASA knew what they were going to do there and what, what, why they are doing the task, what they are right now doing. And the same thing is with our company that uh, Every time you are uh, creating something, uh, writing code, writing blog post, or uh, going to toilet, you know that uh, how this will be uh, beneficial for uh, for the company. How 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 much money we will make out of it, or how less less losses we it will create. And this is very important because the, I have been uh, in past been working with uh, big corporations and. Uh, Usually in, in there, if you are doing software development, you only see the costs. That you know that, okay, our uh, project will cost like uh, 50,000 euros because we have uh, five persons and every, everybody is working for 10,000 euros per day. And those, uh, those guys who are seeing these numbers, they are actually never seeing how much uh, money comes out from the work. And it usually leads to the fact that you are like, like trying to minify the costs and you are then moving all the software development to, to India because it looks like it's cheaper. But also you are going to lose uh, your profit that way. So it's, it's a very uh, important that uh, everybody in your company knows how, where the money comes from and uh, how it's feeding you. Then uh, in Finland we have a company who is doing a taxi business. And if you go to uh, work for that, this company, and uh, it doesn't really matter what you are going to do. If you are building a website or if you are going to be the CEO of this company, the rule is that for the first two weeks you are going to uh, drive a taxi. So you are putting the taxi hat, man hat on and you are just going to do the, like, the uh, very, very basic work, what the uh, business is all about. And uh, this way you can uh, learn actually through your own experience what is it. And uh, in Microsoft, they had the uh, saying that in, when you are working with the Microsoft, you are uh, eating your own dog food because you, are, you need to use the Microsoft tools you are, uh, your com own company is making. Then one Linux company changes it that, okay, we are doing SUSE Linux. So we are drinking our own champagne because they didn't want to call their SUSE Linux the dog food. But in our company, we call that we are eating our own dog shit. It's so the code we are writing is so awful that uh, it feels like sometimes that, ah. 
And uh, that's uh, when you are when you are uh, creating a feature, you must be also uh, be using that feature in some point of future yourself too. And that way, if you have created this awful form and you are right, uh, filling the form first time yourself, you see how awful is it, and then you go and fix it. And uh, one is other one is just uh, just do it. Because usually if you are planning something and uh, you are making careful plans and then you are uh, actually executing those plans, they are not probably... What's, what's going to happen is not probably what you were planning in the first place. And then you need to go to a drawing board back again. So uh, our uh, philosophy is that we just do some crap, then we put it out. And then we, uh, if it's it's if it's scrap and it always always is, then we fix it later, and see how it how it goes. Because of it doesn't uh, it doesn't really uh, uh, make sense to uh, prepare everything perfectly beforehand. Uh, you are losing time, and your customer well users are waiting, and so on. So we just put it out, and then we will see what happens, and we will fix it later. We are not really worried about like. Uh, Chinese and Japanese people that, okay, I made a failure, then you take this uh, katana and say, <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it makes more sense to just try it, and then you fail, and then you make, fix it. And then some bits about uh, financial websites, because you're dealing with the bitcoins. It's a, it's a huge player in the gray and black markets, and it means that uh, a uh, website is a uh, website and the users, it's mostly the users, they are constantly being attacked so that they want to steal the bitcoins from those users. And uh, it's, it's a really uh, pain in the ass when the Russian hackers are trying to attack your website every day. So uh, first of all, I, I want to say that the first rule is that uh, use Python. Because if our founder would have been using PHP, we would be already out of business because the site would be hacked like 50 times. Or if we would be having using something like a Java or a Microsoft Tab, we would be still like writing the service and it wouldn't have been launched yet. So uh, Python is actually the key that why we are still uh, business. Other one is it's it's uh, really a. Uh, Simple thing, I'm not sure if, if anybody knows this. It's, uh, I can show it, it's, uh, on, uh, it's an app, it's called the Google Authenticator. And uh, if you, I don't, you, you probably won't see, but there's a timer going on. And for every, every one minute, you get a new code. And uh, when you're logging to website, you need to keep, keep this code, which is uh, unique for that moment of time. And this kind of uh, simple thing, it's, it's a free, and this is not like it's an open algorithm and it's a standard and stuff. So it's not anything Google specific. It's very easy to integrate on your website, and when you when you put that there, you can be sure that uh, you get rid of all these uh, password hacking problems that someone has a stolen password and then they go there and uh, steal our bitcoins and so on. And I know even in some countries we have a we have a huge problem with the fact that in a, like in a, UK, Australia, and German. When you have online banking, you are having dealing with your real money. You don't have a two-factor authentication. You have just like a username and a PIN code, and you can access uh, your all the bank account with that information. And of course, it's a problem because we have uh, Windows users and uh, their uh, uh, com com computers get compromised with malware, which means that the hacker gets in the computer. It has a total bank account account access and then they are trying to convert those uh, uh, those monies to Bitcoin so that they can actually move the Bitcoin somewhere else. And it's, it's very sad because banks are really not caring about the user security and it's always the, always the poor customer who is, who is losing their money. But if you are using two-factor authentication, there's no problem with this kind of malware or whatever. And one is also, uh, it's, it's called the uh, Apache mod called Fail to Ben. It's, uh, it protects your uh, websites against the brute force at at the attacks. Like someone is trying to uh, uh, log into your website 1,000 times with certain username. It will stop it after five attempts or so. 
and it's it's a very easy to in install on Apache or Nginx, and it's very easy to install your uh, integrate to your services like a clone or Django. I uh, know one more thing is it's it's called because we are we are having this uh, philosophy that, that just do it. It means that uh, after we have done it, our server is probably crashing all the time. So we are using a Python tool called Sentry, which is a logging server. So all the we are not using the file logs, but all the all the exceptions and all the log messages will go to the Sentry website, and it it, it performs a basic analysis for it, and it actually. Uh, shows you what's up, what are the critical errors, which happens like all the time, and preventing users to do stuff, and what's all like just uh, happening sometimes once in a week. And th it means that uh, when you deploy a new cha change on the website, you go to see the sentry and see if any any errors start to happen there. And if if there happens, then we just fix it quickly and deploy again. And uh, that's about it. I think uh, I can. Uh, ah, yeah. We are uh, we are hiring freela freelancers. We want to have a uh, people who are working with the Django and uh, Python. Uh, we have a lot of uh, our business is growing uh, fast, and we don't have enough uh, time to uh, fix all little bugs in all open source projects we are doing. So we hope that we could find a people who can be a reliable freelancers. It doesn't really matter where you are. We can pay you with bitcoins, and. Uh, uh, we can uh, just point you a little th the tasks which you can do. You don't need to be even a full time. So uh, please come to knock me if you want to, uh, any money. And then, uh, yeah, if you if you are a Bitcoin enthusiastic, we can uh, try to promote Bitcoin globally. So if you want to uh, bring Bitcoin to your own country, we can help you with there. And also, of course, if you want to have some Bitcoins now, I can sell you them. Just come to knock me later, and uh, I will give you, so you can try them out. Okay, I think that's about it, and now we have a lot, probably a lot of time for the questions. Any questions? Yes, please. I'm trying to summarize the, the talk. So, uh, you kind of saying that if you want to make money with Python, you can just uh, build an ex exchange system for Bitcoins. That's one way. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, that's one way also. But. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, you can summarize it that way. <laughs> there are there are two other ways, but that's the that's the yeah. No, I think it's it's more like point of the talk is that you need to have a how, what kind of a, a company culture you need to be there behind that you can actually make a profitable business. I hope I've hoped that is the talk. Other questions? Ah, it 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 really. Uh, uh, we are uh, paying our taxes to Finland, it, and it really doesn't matter uh, what kind of money you are using, because in the end, uh, if you are a company, if you are a private person, it might be a little bit different. But in the end, if you are if you are a company and you are a uh, uh, paying out money or accepting money, you always have a receipt. And if you don't have a receipt, you are uh, cheating your taxman and then you will go to jail. So, uh, you can, uh, if you are uh, having, for example, e commerce site where you are taking uh, Bitcoin uh, transactions, you of course have this receipt and you put it to your accounting. And uh, in Finland, the, it's, it's because it virtual currency is a new market and the exchange rate is going like few, 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 few all the time. So uh, the current uh, recommendation is that uh, at the end of the every day, when you did the business with Bitcoins, you take the exchange rate out of the day and use that into your accounting purposes. And with that kind of exchange rate, then you are paying the taxes of the transactions made. And uh, the, of course, the problem is that you need to convert Bitcoins back to euros to pay the taxes. But uh, we are, uh, it's, 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 it's currently, it's. If depending on your country, if you have a country like uh, Finland or uh, USA, it's very easy to convert uh, bitcoins back to euros and other way. So making uh, making euros to pay the taxes is not a problem. Any other questions?
please. Uh, yeah, I, I think the, uh, there are two, two parts in the, this question. First is that uh, how you set the price of certain uh, certain uh, service or uh, product. And uh, the rule is that you, you never use Bitcoins for pricing because the exchange rate is going like this. But uh, you, use, uh, you base your uh, prices for euros and uh, dollars for now. So uh, when you are uh, buying something and... Uh, even if the daily Bitcoin rates uh, changes as a merchant, you will always get the same uh, amount of uh, Bitcoins. Yeah, yeah. And uh, other, other part of this question is that Bitcoin is so-called uh, inflation safe uh, storage of value that uh, unlike, uh, unlike uh, what could be a good example, like uh, United States dollars, so when the United States, United States needs more dollars, they will just uh, print more out. And uh, it means that the, the value of dollar uh, compared to uh, the service is going down. So the people are losing the uh, value of the money they have on their bank account because it's inflating. But in, in Bitcoin, it's, it's uh, actually built in the protocol itself. How, how fast and how much Bitcoins you can have in circulation. So... Uh, more, uh, more uh, Bitcoin mining. Mining comes to the network. It's, a, it's, it's the process of getting new Bitcoin slows down. So it's kind of balancing it out and so that uh, there is no uh, inflation in Bitcoins. And it, it actually leads to the other problem is that uh, when uh, people get Bitcoins, they just want to uh, sit on top of them and not to use them because of the it's, it's guaranteed that in the some sometimes of futures those bitcoins will be the double value, so they are making a waiting that bitcoin price goes up and then they are selling them. Yeah, because uh, in, in the it is a kind of a upper limit for bitcoins and it's it's uh, 21 million bitcoins in the protocol itself and now half of the bitcoins ever have been created and the other half is left it's getting more difficult and uh, i think in the it was 2040 when the last bitcoin has been created and uh, then we don't have any more, more new bitcoins yeah who sets the exchange rate of the bitcoin it's uh, it's it's you when you are uh, s selling or buying the bitcoins, you can uh, say that I want to have a uh, five thousand euros per one bitcoin. But it means that uh, no, no one probably will come to buy your bitcoin. So uh, basically, what happens right now is it's, it's uh, we have uh, so-called centralized exchanges, which more work more like a stock markets, and uh, people are uh, using uh, average value of uh, biggest exchanges. So there's a website called BitcoinAverage.com, which shows all the different uh, values in different currencies, because it also depends if you are doing uh, USD or U Euro. So, uh, but they just take the average of exchanges, and that's like the normal. Any more? Okay, I think... Uh, I think uh, you can, uh, oh yeah, if you want the Bitcoin, just go to this URL and there's the, our website and they will have my uh, offer to buy Bitcoins with three eyes. And if you have any more questions, just come to knock me after the presentation. Thank you. <laughs>